A lot of you asked me to talk about New Zealand. Now, I don't know why you guys want me to talk outside of my area of expertise, but I'm going to take my best crack at it. Uh, so don't take this video as gospel. Uh, if I omitted something or I misinterpreted something, then feel free to look into the comment section because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of you guys that will correct me. But I think I will do a fairly accurate job in assessing the situation. You see, New Zealand is currently governed by Labour, uh, which is a left-leaning party, uh, very similar to Labour from the United Kingdom or the Democrats from the United States. And they won with resounding numbers. Uh, they won so great that they don't even have to make a coalition in order to govern. The leader of the party, one uh, Jacinda Ardern, is a politician that I have started to admire recently. Uh, I admire because I have not seen many politicians able to capitalize on human misery and tragedy, uh, even half of the amount that she was capable of. I mean, historians should start writing books on how politicians can walk on human corpses in order to get their political agenda pushed. Uh, it is something bewildering. Uh, she can literally become a PhD professor and start lecturing to others on how to fear monger like a boss. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, a far-right extremist coming from Australia, which her government allowed into the country, decided to enact his unhinged manifesto uh, based on accelerationism by shooting up a mosque. Now, accelerationism, according to him, is the tactic of allowing authoritarian left-leaning politicians who do not care much for democracy or what people think to have their way. And by allowing this to happen, more and more people are exposed to the way these politicians are behaving, uh, and people who do not like to live under the fist of tyranny will rise up. So, for example, by rushing uh, the gun grab that a lot of leftist politicians want to do, uh, legal gun owners that do not want their gun taken away will rise up. Um, well, guess what uh, Mrs. Ardern did? Well, she went for the guns right away. Like, she didn't even wait a single day after the event. And she started fear-mongering. And her fear-mongering was so effective, like people were in such of an unhinged panic that an entire music festival with more than 5,000 people had been evacuated because a person had a tattoo. Now, someone who saw the tattoo thought that it's a far-right tattoo, which got everyone in a hysteria. And people trampled each other as they tried to find the exit. Turns out that it wasn't a far-right tattoo. It was just a tribal tattoo that the guy was having. But it does go to show the environment and the fear-mongering that politicians and the New Zealand media have created. That if a guy is just sitting there doing absolutely nothing, biding his own business, it can still cause a panic of such a degree that people are just going to scream in panic and run towards the exit. Like, just to have a little bit of a comparison, imagine that after 9-11, a person would think that someone in an establishment is a Muslim, and they would just run away in panic, creating a mass hysteria that would cause people to trample each other, and 5,000 people would have to be evacuated from an event just because a person saw some Islamic text in some guy's handbook or something, okay? Obviously, if that were to happen, the media would start condemning the politicians. Like, obviously, they would start pointing fingers and say, look, you're, you're creating panic in the populations. You're, you're fear-mongering. Uh, but when the left does it, it seems that the mainstream media is not only just fine with it, but they will just amplify the fear-mongering. And if the fear-mongering wasn't enough, she also started uh, virtue signaling like a boss. Now, virtue signaling is when you claim to protect certain communities or represent certain marginalized communities, but you don't really do anything. Like, you don't really give them money. You don't really dedicate some of your time in order to listen to them. You, you just have this vacuous message that everyone agrees with, but you're not really changing anything into the world. And, and in this case, uh, it seems that Jacinda Ardern decided to put on a hijab and go in front of the cameras to show solidarity for the Muslim women. 
The only problem that I have with this is that actual devout Muslim women who wear the hijab for religious reasons, uh, they do so in order to show humility and to be humbled in the, fun in the face of God. Uh, none of which applies to a politician like Jacinda Ardern. And secondly, um, these ladies have to wear the hijab every single time they go outside. It's not a choice. It's not like you can just take it off whenever you feel like it. You have to wear it constantly. That's the whole point of it. Uh, well, Jacinda Ardern just gets to choose when she gets to wear it or not. So I don't really see this as a solidarity. Had she chosen to wear it for the rest of her life, then I would say, yes, okay, well, this, this is actual solidarity. And, you know, she, she is actually trying to raise awareness. But, like, this was more like a PR stunt than anything else. Now, the crackdown on human rights, such as freedom of speech or expression, were amplified. Uh, both the manifesto and the footage of the shooting were declared objectionable. And anyone possessing or sharing the material could carry a prison term for up to 14 years. Um, there are people who commit other hideous crimes, such as manslaughter or rape, and they get less than 14 years. Uh, but just, again, to make a comparison, imagine if after 9-11, like, sharing the footage of the airplanes going into the buildings uh, would warrant you a 14 years potential prison sentence. I mean, that's what we're talking about here, you know? Um, I'm not saying that people who encourage acts of terror or agree with them shouldn't be placed on a watch list or even in extreme circumstances, maybe under certain events, you could give them a fine or a warning or something like that. But like 14 years in prison. And if I'm not mistaken, even um, uh, an 18 year old got a substantial prison sentence for sharing the video. So, you know, it, it, it's really bizarre that Again, people are agreeing with this level of authoritarianism that's more likely to be seen in places like China or in theocracies. Uh, but, well, you know, it is what it is. Hey, maybe the elections is going to shake things around a little bit, right? Well, turns out that as the elections approach, her party was doing quite well in the polls and, you know, most of the mainstream media was uh, cheering for her party. Uh, the only problem seems to be with the pandemic. Um, you see, it just coincided when a lot of other countries were taking lockdown measures. And of course, uh, New Zealand, in order to protect its population, uh, took similar lockdown measures. The only problem is that uh, the election campaigning was suspended due to the lockdown measures. So election campaigning has grounds to a halt after a family caught the virus from an unknown source. Auckland has gotten into level 3 lockdown and because of this political parties are rushing to cancel events both inside and outside the super city. Labour leader Jacinda Ardern said she would uh, likely be based in Wellington for at least the next three days. Meanwhile, National has cancelled all of today's campaigning events and leader Judith Collins said a lot of work would need to be done over the coming days to figure out exactly what this uh, latest case of community transmission will mean for the country. New Zealanders can be assured that the National will be seeking an explanation and clear answers about the situations they find themselves in. Collins called New Zealand to uh, follow the advice of health officials and do their part in order to stamp out the virus. So you have like all of these political parties just cancelling events, shutting down, um, basically unable to campaign anymore. And this uh, culminates with other political leaders calling for election delay because of this. Uh, and they're also pointing out that they're noticing an unprecedented, uh, an unprecedented deluge of special votes in a timely fashion. And the Electoral College also suggested that the voting would be delayed till November so that parties can have more time in order to campaign and get their message across. Now, there was a one-month delay. Uh, initially, the elections were supposed to be on 19th of September. Um, but instead of being delayed all the way till November, they were delayed until 17th of August, still not allowing a lot of time for uh, politicians to uh, actually try and campaign and get their message across. But hey, that's okay, because you still have the independent mainstream media that's going to keep politicians accountable for what's happening and they're going to be the ones dissecting and 
analyzing political opinion. Um, so it just so happens that the mainstream media, because of the government shutdowns, could use uh, a little bit of that sweet, sweet, sweet taxpayer money, $50 million as a rescue package for the New Zealand media. Now, I don't know if there was rescue packages for the working class. Uh, I assume they were because, hey, uh, you know, if it manages to trickle down all the way to the rich, a leftist government would surely be uh, helping the poor people first in these very difficult times. Uh, also, 75 more million dollars were promised if uh, Labour wins, and, and guess who won? So with very little time of campaigning and a deluge of special votes, as it was called out, uh, we now have Jacinda Ardern's Labour Party scoring a landslide win. Now, even left-leaning political commentators expected her to win. They just didn't expect a landslide, which means that she is now going to be able to create her own government. Uh, again, the Labour Party in New Zealand is very similar to the Democratic Party in the United States or the Labour Party in the United Kingdom. They are very left-leaning, very progressive people, concerned about the environment, uh, concerned about minorities and all the other good stuff. So. I will be watching New Zealand with great interest over the next four years because what is going to happen in New Zealand, what we're going to see there is representative of what it would be like if the left manages to gain unquestionable power. Again, they do not have a coalition. There is no, very little checks and balances now. They have won a landslide victory. They can pretty much pass whatever legislation they want. They have pretty much free reign over the country. So if you're a citizen of Europe or a citizen of the United States, look towards New Zealand and, you know, maybe it is going to be the land of milk and honey. Maybe it is going to be a utopia where you would like to live in. And if that's the case, then vote left. Uh, because this is giving us an opportunity to see exactly how it's going to be like under a leftist government that won by a landslide.